um, you know, one of the questions that was asked of us to, to, to think about is, you know, how, what would we do, what be, the best advice that we could give you? Um, and so that sort of comes back to um, answering your question. But I think that you really have to think outside the box. What, what is your passion? What, what do you want to wake up every morning and, and how do you want to show up? So, for example, this is, may sound a little harsh and I don't know you so well yet, but here I go because this is an honesty session. Um, you may have to wait on tables when you graduate, but what you have to, the perspective that you have to look at is what can I learn during this process that's going to help me get to where I want to go? Because these things don't come to you and all of a sudden you find yourself, wow, that's the last place that I expected to meet the guy of my dream. So, or, you know, that someone comes into the restaurant and you get to talking to them and it's like, oh, so that's what you do for a living. But they liked how you presented and next thing you know, a business card is exchanged and you take it from there. So it's a continuous process is the point I'm trying to make. So you can't say, okay, I'm at A and how do I get to Z without going through the whole passage. But you got to put yourself out there and it might mean doing, wait a minute, I have a neuroscience degree, why am I waiting on tables? You got to think about that, because it might lead somewhere. Or if you do love fashion, show up at Neiman Marcus, because you will be surprised at who you will meet. And how you show up is how people will present to you. Are you approachable? Because that's where you are right now in your phase of life, right? You want to be approached, but you also have to be there. So. And that's how things have happened for me in the past. So I just kept showing up. We need people who think outside the box, who have a different headset, and who can think broadly. We need teams. It's not about you know one lab motoring through and, and getting something, one task done. It's about an integrative approach to making things faster, cheaper and more efficient. Um, that's where it stands. And and this is an incredible time and an incredible place to be. Because yeah. this is this is you are you are practically well if it was in Cambridge you would be sitting in the black hole at the center of the biotech universe. It's out there. Um, you, you can throw a stone and hit any biotech uh, person right in the head. Show up. Get those business cards and start showing up everywhere. Um, it's about getting out there, but target, target where you go. Show up at, at meetings. Just Google anything. You'll find a, a meeting or an association or, or a group. Uh, uh, TBM, the Biosciences Network. These are individuals. You can join. You can go to their meetings and events and start talking to people, ask questions. And as you develop a sense of, hmm, this is more interesting or not, you'll, you'll get more of a direction, and there will be a point on the horizon to sign on. Thank you. I have just one thing to add, if I may. Um, are there any entrepreneurs in the room? So if you're anybody thinking about starting your own job or lab or career? A couple? Okay, so for the two of you, and maybe for those of you who haven't really thought about it before, I just wanted to add really onto what Maxine was saying here about following your passion, because we say a lot of these things like, do what makes you happy, but what does it really mean? So in terms of those, for those of you who are maybe interested in actually like doing that, translating a passion into money using your science degree sooner than later, uh, here's how to do it, okay? So you, <laughs> I, I think, I write this down. Yeah, write this down, because it's not that complicated. Uh, so if you think about another theme of what we're saying here too, which is finding a problem, that will help you in anything here. So from getting a job, to sales, to whatever. And then you have to marry the two, right? So whatever you're passionate about, you need to sell it to others as though it solves a problem. If that makes sense. You make it work. That's how you make it work. Okay, Find out what's cool about this, and you're already an expert at it, even if you don't realize it. People will ask you, because you know more than everybody else in the room about whatever your passion is. If you can find out it solves a problem, then you enter competitions. Okay, Competitions, it's a broad term. It could mean grants. It could mean a job position. It could mean uh, actual competitions like what I did. So there are a lot of just 
things where you have to get up on stage and you have 60 seconds to sell it, whatever it may be, and you will win $100,000. Like Shark Tank. Like yeah. shark, shark Tank is the same exact thing. That's all those people are. They have a passion about something, they sell it in a way that it solves a problem. So I entered the MIT annual $100,000 competition and came in first place for the life sciences. And people were flying in for this. I was a bartender across the street for six years in Cambridge at a business school. So these people were talking all the time. That's how I found out about it. Because I was the bartender at the business school. And you know, I don't have a business degree. But the, the day after I won this thing, people were coming in the bar like, you, the bartender? You know, so it doesn't mean anything if you have to wait till you do whatever you need to do. But uh, competitions are all over the place, and you can apply for funding in terms of a National Science Foundation grant, NIH, whatever it is. So, yeah. so that's what I wanted to add to that. One more thing to add. That, that's, that is, if you take anything away, take that. Also, the Venture Cafe, anybody here the Venture Cafe in Cambridge? It's really cool. It's very cool. You can just show up there. It's uh, Thursday afternoons from 3 to 8. Just show up and start talking. The air fa fairly crackles with entrepreneurial industry, with energy. There's people there from clean tech, from biotech, anybody who's looking to, s to make connections and talk about starting something up. Uh, there, there are VC roundtables there. Even just to go there and, and nurse a beer for the whole time and, and just start listening is an education. It's great, but pay attention because I mean, you you say that you want to be an entrepreneur, and again, if you find out a little bit more about it, don't be disappointed if you don't want to do it anymore. I, you know, you might actually, if you start waiting on tables, you might say, "Wait a minute, I think I want to own my own restaurant." How does science come into that? Well, you get to do food chemistry if that's what you love. So just keep your mind open and just kind of explore, and that's why you guys are so lucky. Really, you know, that's, that's a great, great place to be. But in neuroscience, I took one course in that and I learned the difference between talent and skill, and this was a very important lesson for me. Talents are something that you're born with. As soon as conception starts, those neurons and all that connection starts making. So what you're describing here with passion is putting your talents and skills together. Skills are what you learn in school. It's what you go out and, you know, you gather information. But how do you marry your talent with your skill. That could take time and you're not disappointed in some of the stuff that I failed to mention. I hated waiting on tables. But I knew that it would eventually, I had to focus on where is this going to take me? What's the opportunity here? There's a learning and that had to be my perspective. So you might have to do some things that aren't as much fun because it's not where you thought you should be. But there's a really a great opportunity always if, you, if that's what you're focused on. So when I was hiring people over the past 10 or 12 years, I don't, that's what I wanted. I wanted somebody that understood the business side, so an MBA is sort of the way to do it. But um, I can't tell you how many people come into my office and say, you know, I'm done with science. But I've been part of teams and I watch what happens, so this project management was really interesting. Can, what do I need to know? And a lot of times when they go out on interviews, they don't have, the, they don't have that MBA or the practical experience, so I give it to them. And I work with their boss, and these are obviously for internal people within the company that are interested. And I give them a project to do. It's meaningful, it needs to get done, it takes maybe 10% of their time or 20% of their time. Then when they go for an interview within the company or even external, they say, you know what, I don't have the MBA, but look what I did in this program management department, either in Gen or you know, if it's an internal one, they recognize me, or if it's external, at least they recognize it's a, it's a function within a large biotech or pharmaceutical company. So, you know, I'm, I've definitely set aside the absolute need for a degree. In fact, half of the people I've, I've hired have been working on a degree at the time. So they didn't have it in their back pocket. They were still learning. But it comes down to the practicality of, mm -hmm. you know, what do you know? How good are you? Are you a people person? Are you good at negotiating? Are you a good team player? That, the, the degree is nice, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't require In fact, there are degrees in program management. I don't have one. Nobody that works in my department has one, but we're all really good, so to speak, at what we do. But it's about, you know, it's about a connection, and it's about what you know and what your experiences are. So at least for me, I would not abjectly require it. But it's, it's a combination, it's kind of an equation that you put together. I don't know what another 
person would do, but I wouldn't require it any longer. I'd, I'd rather look at the, at your history of what you can bring to me and to the teams that you work on. That's a great question, because I think that um, to some degree that, that that still happens to me now, because <laughs> as I go on, I mean, I, I question all the time, wait, am I where I want to be? Because I'm a progress with a purpose kind of person, and I'm not sure that I'll ever be completely satisfied with where I am now. But what I do realize is that I am I mature, I understand, I'm more at peace with, well, this is as far as I've gotten because I've done this, so it does work. And that's really important to me that I didn't waste my time. However, I'm still sacrificing, and because that never ends, because I still want to learn and I want to get better. So it, it's still, it's a sacrifice that right now I actually do have to work. And I would rather be back in school full time, figuring out stuff. So the sacrifice for me is my job, to some degree, because I've, you know, I've taken out a lot. For me, it was doing my master's degree part time and working full time. And like I said initially, uh, the reason I did that was so that I, first of all, could pay for it, and second of all, so that I could keep an eye on what was going on in the company. The company was exploding. It was at its earliest, one of its early growth stages, and I saw them hiring. They, they, they had to bring in recruiters to hire people. They didn't have enough HR people to do the hiring. So I knew something was happening, and I didn't want to leave and have to compete to come back in necessarily. I wanted to be in there and watch what was happening, and, and that's why, how I was able to you know, identify this role as being something that was interesting, and that was a long time ago, and it's been straight up since then. So it was a sacrifice at the time. But it paid off exactly how I hoped it would. Did you have to take a first? Um, yeah. Or third, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, this is a really hard question for me to answer. I think maybe because I'm uh, recently out of school, but I think it's kind of uh, the trouble with ambition almost is that I think all of you are here because you've earned it. You've worked very hard to get here. And you're still fighting because you came here. So you all are ambitious. And one of the downfalls of that is that it by definition requires that you pull ahead of the pack and that you move beyond the social fun aspect of life. And it's like you leave people behind and that can be really tough. And it's because of differences, I think. It so you have to allow yourself to be successful and don't let whatever has happened in your life so far, whether it be family, friends, whatever's holding you back, just you have to, you reach this point where you don't let them hold you back anymore. And it can be very hard to sacrifice things, but you, you do it. Yeah, sacrifice isn't necessarily a bad word, is no, it? It's not, it's, not no. it's just a hard it's one just that you have to one. allow yourself to, to yeah. do. Yeah, and speaking to that, I would think um, regret. You know, with, with sacrifice, there's always a, you think about, oh, was that the right thing? You know, I'm, I'm way, way, way into my career, and I think about, again, the hard work that I put into getting every inch of where I am now. But um, keeping keeping your eye on, on what you need and and trying to just, just free yourself and let go of things that, that are going to weigh you down, that are going to hold you back. Uh, and, and those are hard decisions. Those are hard decisions. You know, I, I, I did stay home with, with my, my, my family, which was just wonderful. I would not take back a minute of that. But it was hard. It was hard getting back on the pony again and taking off. Um, now, you know, I'm working double time to keep up to stay at the head of my game um, would have been much more easy. It would have been easier 20 years ago, but um, I have no intention of retiring to Florida anytime soon. <laughs> I couldn't afford it anyway. But it's, you know, to, to, to stay on it and to be in what I love, I'm willing to let go of, of some of the other things. 